13 and 14 overall, finishing in eighth place in the ACC. They were not invited to the NCAA tournament. So this is the next best thing. The Spiders in their road blue uniforms, the Hokies in their home whites, and we're underway. Jordan King and Delani Hunt, a couple of transfers who infuse talent and athletic ability for Chris Mooney's club. Starting again tonight, the rebound by Lynn Kidd, one of the most improved players in the ACC this past season. Collins, no. Was stopping to listen to Enter Sandman. That, that's, you know, that's the only reason I was quiet. Of course, when am I ever quiet on the microphone? So. How can we get them to sing more? <laughs> <laughs> and welcome to Castle Coliseum in Blacksburg, Virginia. Just underway, the Richmond Spiders co-champions out of the Atlantic 10 Conference taking on Virginia Tech from the ACC. With Corey Alexander, I'm Doug Sherman. And you have not missed much off the turnover. Here comes Delani Hunt, the former Wagner Seahawk, though. Had it knocked away by Sean Padula, the third team all-conference guard for Tech. Hunter Couture off the mark, and we remain scoreless. Great look for Hunter Couture in transition. Sean Padula not only doing a great job defensively, getting back and taking away transition points, but pushing the basketball, finding Couture ahead, who Rarely misses a wide open three as such. Well, the winner of this game will get Ohio State, as you just saw here on ESPN2. The Buckeyes survived the Big Red of Cornell, 88 83. And that is something that is very common in the NIT. These non power conference schools getting an opportunity to play an extra game in the NIT. They get a lot of wins, they push and play well. And it's always curious to see, Corey, whether the big school team really wants to be here and play. Well, and that's always going to be the scenario simply because teams are often disappointed by being left out of the NCAA tournament. And Selection Sunday was just 48 hours ago. So you consider oftentimes you're not quite over those emotions of not being able to relive your dream and playing in the NCAA tournament, but you better get it together quick playing in the NIT. Just over two minutes in, a combined 0 for 7 from the floor. Lynn Kidd sets the screen. Padula, skip pass. Couture, extra pass to the corner. Robbie Barron around and out. Of course, Robbie Barron from Richmond. So, of course, there's sure some relationships, not only on the floor, but many people watching this to make sure he has a good one against the hometown team. Also, to have bragging rights when he goes home this summer. Well, Corey, we just saw the matchup. That is what I'm going to be keeping my eye on. Sean Padula knocked the ball away from Jordan King. A couple of elite-level guards, both about six feet tall. They list Padula at 6'1", but that could go a long way in determining the ball game here tonight. As an elite-level play-by-play, I would expect you to keep your eye on all the matchups going on. But, you know, that's just me expecting the best out of you, my guy. I appreciate that. Go. Our first bucket comes from Lynn Kidd, the senior from Gainesville, Florida. And rare to see these two teams almost three minutes into this game getting the first bucket. However, defense has been at a premium. This is a very good defensive team of the Richmond Spiders. And, of course, the Hokies normally hang their hat on their defense. Another strong defensive effort by Sean Padula on the last possession. And, you know, the Spiders are fourth in the country and fewest turnovers per game. They've already coughed it up twice in the early going tonight. Barron puts it on the deck. Finds the cutting Padula. And he missed the layup. Padula missed an opportunity there. One more pass. Lynn Kidd gets a dunk in comparison to him challenging and getting a shot block at the rim. Jai Bailey, senior from Wilson, North Carolina, number four in blue. Here goes Neil Quinn. Back into Quinn. He is kind of a passed first seven-footer. He leads the team in assists, but also quite capable, scoring nearly 13 per game. But that's one of the areas where Chris Mooney has always used his bigs to be able to pass the basketball and facilitate offensively. More of a skill big than a bruiser in the paint. Hunt to King off the hesitation, leaves his feet, and that's a third Richmond turnover. Yeah, Richmond off to a tough start handling the basketball. You mentioned only 8.7 turnovers a game, fourth nationally, but the Hokies have picked it up defensively. Tough shot, Padula. It's an air ball. 
Kid able to save it to Hunter Couture. Potentially playing his final college basketball game. King, shovel it off. Robbie Barron denies the shot attempt at the rim by Isaiah Bigelow. Slow start off. Great point guard matchup because, you know, I actually happened to be one of those back in the day. And you, you were? have not been a very good point guard today. Oh, we here will we talk go. about that story here later because we, we have two great point guards in a matchup that we're looking at. Sean Padula with 16.4 points per game leads Virginia Tech in scoring and assists. Third team all ACC, but Jordan King, as you mentioned, not only first team all A-10 and co-player of the year, but also all academic, which is a feat that has only been accomplished once before by Pepe Sanchez in 1999-2000 season. Did Back you know in that? The day, I did know that. Where did Pepe Sanchez play? Temple. Ah, look at you I was your alive. I was alive back then. Jordan King still looking for his first points. He's now 0 for 2 from the floor. Yeah, he's the A-10 co-player of the year along with Deron Holmes of Dayton, who was named an All-American earlier today. I could go back to the early 1900s and bring up trivia, and you can say I was alive then. I mean, that's different. <laughs> I've only got you by seven <laughs> years, man. It's a long seven years. So that means you could remember the 19 teens. <laughs> Strong drive to the bucket. Jai Bailey, the senior from Wilson, North Carolina, has Richmond's first two points. And one of the things that you're going to see from Chris Mooney is to make sure that they attack Sean Padula. Of course, MJ Collins, Hunter Couture, the better perimeter defenders. But teams have at times picked on Sean Padula, seeing if he'll stand up to that challenge to do what he does offensively on the defensive end. Elijah Poti into the game, goes to the floor, throws the ball away, and here come the Spiders with numbers. King stops at the three-point line. And the rebound comes to Couture. Oh, that's Can't what I'm give him about, that Hunt. much room. Way too much room, but I love the attempt by Hunter Couture, staying aggressive early. In this game, as you mentioned, could be the last game for Virginia Tech's all-time leader from three-point percentage. And all-time games played leader as well in the history of this program. The three ball good by Isaiah Bigelow, 39% on the year. Coming off a solid game against St. Joe's in the loss of the A-10 tournament. And forgive me for saying percentage, even though he may be very high in percentage, he's their makes leader. Potreet, Potit trying to post up Bailey inside. Instead, Collins looking to go to work on the switch. Poteet, and a foul on the rebound. That's a tough ask for Jai Bailey at 6'5", 195 to battle with Malijal Poteet listed at 6'9", 265. That's one of, the areas of, one of the areas of strength for the Hokies. Offensive rebounding, and you've got a two-headed monster at the center position when you consider Elijah Petit as well as Lynn Kibb. Both these guys do a tremendous job attacking the offensive glass. Collins feeds the post. Again, Petit looking to go to work. Better size matchup there defensively for Richmond, and then the foul after the miss. Neil Quinn every bit of 7 feet 260. And he's a transfer from Lafayette, second team All-Atlantic 10 Conference this year. And he brings size that Richmond will desperately need against the Hokies tonight. Mike Walls into the game. Back up center at 6'11". Yeah, Walls with size as well to be able to compete with Petit on the interior, and you've got to be a strong guy to battle the force that Melisa with Petit goes at you with the, in the paint. Here's Walls with a terrific pass and the throwdown by Bigelow. But what you're seeing when you're talking Richmond Spiders basketball, Chris Mooney at the helm, your bigs have to be facilitators. They have to be playmakers, and you see the nice play by Walls. Petit on the offensive glass. Knocked away by Walls, and here come the Spiders already riding a 7-0 run. I'll tell you what, Walls has already had a big impact since checking into this game. Two defensive stops and a beautiful dime. Bigelow, after the highlight dunk, steps out but misses the three. Rebound corralled by Jaden Young, the freshman from Goldsboro, North Carolina. Padula a little bit short, and here comes Jordan King out of Christian Brothers Academy in Albany where he played for Dave Domel. And a
And again, a good, strong drive by Bailey. And since Virginia Tech made the first basket with 17.06 remaining, they have not scored a 9-0 run by the Richmond Spiders. Virginia Tech right now 1 of 15 from the field, Dougie Fresh. And that is a blocking foul as Padula put it on the deck. Well, do the Hokies want to be here? That is always the question in these first round. A lot of history in the NIT with the Hokies. And right now, the Hokies trying to decide whether they want to be here or not because the Spiders have taken it to them to start this game. Kadour has his pass knocked out of bounds. Virginia Tech will keep it. We should also mention Sean Smith averaged 16 points per game for Bill Foster's Hokies team. And again, you never want to be in the NIT. The, the goal is always to get to the NCAA. But when you wind up in the NIT, what do you do with it? It's an opportunity to play more games. Our colleague Tom Crean had an impassioned well, speech, I guess you can call it, on ESPN the other night, and I completely agree. I don't know if you saw it, Corey. I, I did see parts of it, and I do understand completely where Coach Crean is coming from, but I also understand the aspect of the schools that have declined the invitation. So I, I see both sides of this argument, and, you know, part of that falls on the NCAA for opening one, the transfer portal, on Monday. Yeah. And so when you consider that, there are many schools who have to rebuild and start their new season, and they did that on Monday in comparison to trying to coach their teams in the NIT because the reality behind it is when you're coaching your team during this stretch, you fall behind in the transfer portal. And being that that's the way the game has gone, whether it's right or wrong, you like it, you don't like it, that's the way the game has gone. And with that being said, you will be behind the eight ball playing in these games. Hokies scoreless now for about six minutes. A 9-0 Richmond run turns into an 11-0 run as Isaiah Bigelow has played big so far here tonight. And Dougie Fresh, I say that as a member of the 1992 NIT champion, mm -hmm. Virginia Cavaliers. I understand the value of the NIT and understand how important it is. We had a great season the year after, and of course the NIT was a springboard to that success. So but the way college basketball is now, year to year, as opposed later, to building. <laughs> right, 30 years later, it's a different game as MJ Collins steps up and knocks down the three ball, only the second field goal for the Hokies in this game. Well, 17 different teams, including three from the ACC and one from the A-10, declined. St. Bonaventure was the only team from the A-10 to say no thank you. Those three points gotten right back by Mikkel Tyne. Now six out of eight. The Spiders, after missing their first seven shots, have caught fire. But uh, every team, every school, every program has a different set of circumstances. And so like Syracuse was playing really with only seven or eight guys to end the regular season, and if you've got a couple of guys who say, I want to go into the transfer portal, how on earth can you play a game a day later? And already two guys from Syracuse as Lynn Kidd gets the bucket in the paint. Already two guys I know of have already entered the transfer portal at Syracuse. And when you got guys who are already, in, and I'm not saying that's the case for Syracuse and the two players that have entered the portal, but some guys already have a foot out the door. And so trying to get them to come and be motivated to play in the NIT after the disappointment of not making it to the NCAA tournament, that's asking a lot of those players. Another turnover by the Spiders, their fourth. Second yeah, Justin Taylor and Quadier Copeland. Four, two Jones important Jones. members, a starter and one of the best six men coming off the bench as we see MJ Collins who has developed his offensive game knocking down the three ball. However, not to be outdone, the Spiders adept from beyond the arc. Well, Tech has not shot it well, just one of nine from beyond the three-point line through the first ten and a half minutes here tonight, down by seven in this first-round game of the NIT between a couple of old Southern Conference rivals. This is the 109th meeting between these two schools, but the first time in 15 years in an official game. Lynn Kidd with a nice left-handed bucket. And that's a way that the Hokies can try to get back into this one after getting down big, get the basketball to Lynn Kidd, allow him to operate in the post. A young man who's 60% from the field. Well, 66% to be exact. That's fourth best in the ACC, yeah, or in the country, I mean. Yeah, I didn't read the Virginia Tech game, though, so didn't know the exact number. I'm he's, pretty familiar with this group. He's been well over 60% all year, Corey. Well, I said over 60%. <laughs> <laughs> Shot clock at two. 
Doesn't matter as Bailey calmly drains the three. He's got seven. One thing for certain, you do not have to question. The Spiders want to be here, and specifically Jai Bailey, who has gotten off to a great start here throughout this game. The A-10's version of the most improved player. Well, he was originally a high three-star, recruited by Wake Forest. He committed to the Demon Deacons, but then got out of his commitment after a coaching change when Danny Manning was let go. And so he reopened his recruitment, wound up at Richmond, and now in his fourth year playing for Chris Mooney, who's been in charge of the Spiders for 19 years. What a run. Amazing. And a great guy. Have a very good relationship with Chris Mooney. Love the way his co he coached his team, coaching style. This has been a different year for them, though, a defense. I mean, they've been a very good defensive team. You're normally used to seeing the Spiders who cut you up elite offensively. This has been about their defense this season. Well, it's been a great bounce back year for the Spiders. 23-9, and nine, although they've lost their last two. And we talk about the disappointment of the ACC schools not being in the big dance. Chris Mooney's team shared the regular season title in the AT, A-10. And, and, you know, two weeks ago they were thinking, well, we're going to hopefully make it to the NCAA tournament. So they've got to come over the disappointment to being in the NIT, and so far they have looked like they really want to be here tonight. Yeah, and also when you start talking about a comeback a year ago at this time, Chris Mooney was recovering from heart surgery. Yep. So a major comeback for Coach Mooney as well, not just about his team and what they've done on the floor, but also for what he's persevered from, he and his family individually. Well, he underwent heart surgery last February to, an addre uh, to address an aneurysm in his ascending aorta. And so when he was making his recovery, so as not to strain his voice and to talk too loud, he went to the Janet Jackson microphone during practice, and that continues. He liked it so much, so he doesn't have to raise his voice and everybody can hear him. I am going to need one of those for my camps this summer. That is perfect. I mean, again, when you mentioned Janet Jackson, she wore that when she was in control. Yes. That's the way of showing, hey, listen, yeah, I'm in control here. I got the microphone. So now, I know where you're going to go when I ask you this. So uh -oh. I said it's a Janet Jackson microphone this morning at Shoot Around. Uh -huh. Somebody else said Madonna. I said no. Coach Mooney immediately went with Britney Spears. Out of those three, where are you going with that microphone? Well, I'm going Janet. Of course. It's simply because I have vivid memories of Janet's video control. Of course. With the microphone on. I don't remember the Madonna nor Britney Spears video with that, but, again, Janet was more of my childhood favorite growing up. So it is something that Coach Mooney has adopted in his 19th year, the ninth longest tenured coach in the country at his current school. His team continues to pour it on. Delani Hunt. From Upper Marlboro, Maryland, with his first three points. Now, I figured you'd go with Janet. Even though you like to make it out like I'm a lot older than you, we are basically of the same generation. Well, I mean, you know, seven years, that's a long, that's a long time. Thank you for asking me. Think about, you were actually in school before I was born. Oh! That is how you shoot 66% from the floor. Lynn Kidd now with eight. Hey, listen, don't allow the details. To take getting away from away, a great yeah, story, get away a great story. You know, know what I'm saying? I do. <laughs> I do. Bigelow draws the foul. He sees Wake Forest is able to beat App State. That would be a rematch with Georgia, which Georgia won the matchup against Wake Forest earlier this season. However, that was a Wake Forest team that was playing without Efton Reed. So it'll be interesting to see that matchup and more importantly, where that matchup would be if it got to it in the NIT. Wake Forest, I'm sure, would love to have another home game in that matchup with the SEC power Georgia Bulldogs. Isaiah Bigelow with a pair of free throws back to a nine-point lead. The Hokies have picked it up. They had a drought of six and a half minutes, Corey, after missing 13 of their first 14 shots. But since, they have made four out of six. This man's been right in the middle of it all. Lynn Kidd drawing a crowd in the paint. Goes over the right shoulder again. I'm not sure if I would Lynn Kidd if I would ever consider passing the basketball. When you consider, <laughs> I mean, you know, two out of every three times he shoots the basketball, it goes in. That's what 66.7% is, actually. Just in case you didn't know that. I know math's not your strength. It's not. That's why you're here. <laughs> no, uh, you know, and I talked to, to Lynn Kidd after shoot-around earlier today about the improvements that he has made, both in his all-around game at the free throw line as well, and it just has been from hard work, not surprisingly. Speaking of hard work, MJ Collins has put in the hard work, knocking down the three ball. He has become a much better offensive player throughout this season. Normally you see it happening 
during the summer, and it kicks in for guys when the season starts. But it's been midway through this year for MJ Collins. Jordan King setting up his teammate Tyler Harris. And up slowly and walking now with a limp, Hunter Couture. He looks at the official. Adam Florin says, I'm good. I'll play on. I'll tell you this. In the last five seasons, I've done a lot of games where Hunter Couture has got up limping. Mm -hmm. This is one of the toughest young so men that the ACC has seen. He'll limp through, but then you'll see him cut back door in a few plays as you watch Hunter Couture on the replay going in and just running into Quinn. Not just his left, but both, both of his feet hitting Quinn on that possession, getting up slowly. But at some point in this game, we'll probably see him go back door and dunk the ball two hands as he gets to the free throw line on this possession. Yeah, right on cue. This this backcourt for Virginia Tech the last two years, they are solid as a hokey stone. And you talk about Hunter Couture. His coach says he is as tough as a pine knot, and he has shown that over and over and over again. And so now Couture, who takes the, the line, five points shy of becoming the 18th hokey in the history of the program with 1,500 career points. Last three games, he has struggled a bit, so he's not gotten to 1,500 yet. Looks good on his first free throw attempt. Well, Hunter's battled injuries. Who will host their matchups here? Yeah, I, I got to say, Kenny Brooks is the pride of Waynesboro, Virginia. You know what? The pride. Your cousin is the pride L listen, of Waynesboro. Listen to this, and, and I know, of course, you know, with this being a Virginia Tech game, there are a lot of people throughout the state as well as Waynesboro watching. I am going to admit to that. Wow. You see what's that? And, and the reason is, Kenny graduated from Waynesboro High School. Kenny is in the Hall of Fame at Waynesboro High School. I am not. You went away. However, there was a Corey Alexander Day in Waynesboro. Kenny Brooks has yet to have one of those. <laughs> yet. Well, again, yet. Exactly. Yep. You know, we talk about history. In history, this always, always happened. Padula gets it back from Elijah Poteet. He was looking for a foul and gives it back to Poteet. That's a pretty good teamwork right there. Number three giving it back to number 34. But that's when Sean Padula is at his best, when he's attacking the basket, drawing defenders, and then dropping it off to his teammates for an easy bucket. Oftentimes he may force them and take tough shots in comparison to making the easy play. Hokies within two. Hunt working on Collins. Three to shoot. And with the crowd behind him, the defense gets a stop, and now Virginia Tech with a chance to tie or take the lead. Padula has it poked away. And then he commits the foul. So Delani Hunt with the theft, and then Sean Padula picks up his first personal foul. And it's a natural reaction as a point guard. If you get your pocket pick, to oftentimes try to get the basketball back. Sean Padula felt like he was fouled. There was contact there. And then, of course, compounds it by reaching in, smacking Hunt on the arm, getting that foul. But one of the things for Sean Padula, he's too valuable to this Virginia Tech team to waste fouls 93 feet from the basket. Yeah, like you said, averaging over 16 points, four and a half assists per game, third team all ACC. King comes to the basketball, looking for his first points off the front iron, long rebound. That ankle looks okay right now for Hunter Couture in transition. Great pass. There's that combo. Couture sets up Padula for two, and we are tied at 24. But that's it once again. When you're attacking, understand the primary defender oftentimes can take away a good shot, but you can give it up for a great shot. Hunter Couture doing it on that possession. It's an 11-2 run for the Hokies. And again, the shot clock for Richmond becoming a factor. Tough runner by Hunt. Quinn with the stick back. First two points for the senior from Allendale, New Jersey. A great response by the Spiders to get the offensive rebound by Quinn, showing a soft touch, getting it back on the glass. But the momentum is clearly on the side of the Hokies here in front of the Castle Guard on their home floor. Poteet comes free. Collins finds him. And the throwdown ties it at 26. And Quinn yelling at his teammates, no one letting him know there's a back screen right there. Tough for the big guy to be able to maneuver it around when he doesn't know he's going to get hit. 
best back screen you ever ran into was by? I don't remember because I was <laughs> called, knocked out cold on the floor. NBA or college? Oh, NBA. Uh, nothing worse. I want to say Sean Kemp. However, I had to go back and watch the tape to see who it was for certain. Uh. Badula. Poteet using that strength to get right to the basket. And we talked about the two-headed monster in the post for the Hokies. Melijah Petit, Lynn Kidd, both these guys having success in the paint. First Tech lead since 2-0. Spiders went on a 9-0 run after that and had led throughout. Momentum all in Tech's favor right now. Couture. And flying in for the putback, MJ Collins. Timeout. At the Hokies hold a four-point lead. Yeah, 11 of their last 15 after the brutal start from the floor, and the big guys doing their part. Lynn Kidd, 10 points, four rebounds. Malaysia Poteet coming off the bench with six. He is back on the bench talking to Ace Custis, the former Hokie great. These two guys combined eight of nine from the field when you think about Kidd and Petit, and they have been a bonus truly for Virginia Tech. Coming into the season, Mike Young wasn't certain what type of production he was going to get along that front line, but he's got great production from his center spot. And at this end, Corey, as Richmond misfires again, how do the Spiders get Jordan King going? Still scoreless despite averaging 18 and a half points per game. Well, when you come in as the top of the Scouting report, oftentimes you're going to get Hunter Couture defending you. Hunter Couture has done a great job not giving any space for King to be able to operate. That's another four shot by Padula. One where, and, and again, I love Sean Padula, but oftentimes he gets himself in trouble, especially in the paint, trying to finish when he's created opportunities to be able to get his teammates open. And I wonder when you're six foot one, when you face a guy defending you who's 5'10, you, you got to fight an urge to try and take advantage of that, right? Well, who, who are you calling 6'1? Well, according to the <laughs> I was just Virginia checking. Tech, <laughs> okay, <laughs> he clearly, though, does have a height advantage over Mikel Tyne, regardless of how big he is. So you uh, look I, at that and you say, okay, I can go and impose my will. I would agree with that wholeheartedly. Right. Today, with a couple of games on the schedule, that will continue tomorrow. We are here in Blacksburg, Virginia. First round action of the NIT. The Hokies hosting the Spiders. And there is the combination that has been so lethal for the Hokies the last couple of years. Padula with his fifth assist tonight, setting up Hunter Couture. Beautiful find from Sean Padula, getting off the screen and roll action, and more importantly, recognizing where the open guy would be. The execution was great out of timeout. And that is now 1,500 points in the wonderful career of Hunter Couture. Spiders answer right back. Quinn with two. And during the basketball extremely well, when they, and that's how they picked up their scoring. Richmond with the basketball to be in the second half, and true to form, they get a back cut, which finds an open corner three that is missed by Isaiah Bigelow. And a whistle in the backcourt. Well, off the top, we talked about the A-10 Co. Player of the Year, Jordan King, and he is still searching for his first point. Sean Padula, four points, only the one made bucket, a couple of free throws. You talked about the fact that while this is not a true matchup, you've got Hunter Couture a lot of times checking Jordan King, and that has been checkmate so far for Virginia Tech. And if it's not Hunter Couture, it's MJ Collins. Both these guys, elite-level perimeter defenders, and Mike Young understands how to take out the top of the scouting report as Lynn Kidd continues his perfection off a beautiful dime from Hunter Couture. Now six for six from the floor. That 66% is going to be inching up tonight. But that goes back to what you talked about before. Now 10 assists for the Hokies. Delani Hunt with the three ball. And Delani Hunt, Jai Bailey, these guys really have been the answer offensively for the Spiders on the perimeter. Where Jordan King has not been able to get going, he's had his teammates pick up the slack. Yeah, Bigelow leads the Spiders with nine. Bailey now with seven. Hunt six. Quinn's got four. And it's a turnover. Give it back to Richmond, the fifth turnover committed by the Hokies. You see the great execution, of course. Hunter Couture is always going to have someone trailing the screen, 
but he commands so much attention. As the help comes over, he's able to drop off the beautiful dime to Lynn Kidd, who drops the hammer. So, Corey, what were the Spiders supposed to do better in that action? Well, honestly, if, if you're Quinn in that position, the only thing that you can do is play and drop coverage and give up the tough two by Hunter Couture with the defender trailing him. However, that's still like shooting fish in a barrel for Couture. Tell you what, Isaiah Bigelow has a nose for the basketball. He is their leading rebounder, gets one there in the putback, and he is now into double figures with 11. And interestingly enough, you know, he's a Wofford transfer. He spent his redshirt freshman year playing or sitting, practicing under Mike Young. Of course, Mike Young famously now in his fifth year at Virginia Tech after a marvelous run at Wofford. And you know who was supposed to have been his teammate, correct? Uh, the man we just saw on the screen there, Hunter Couture. That exactly. Hunter Couture committed. committed to Wofford. And then when Mike Young got the job here at Virginia Tech, decided to get out of his commitment and follow Coach Young here, and it was a great decision for Couture. Couture denied by Quinn. Hunter Couture in the first half tonight joined the 1,500-point club. Padula holding his arm as he lays on the floor, now back to his feet. Out of bounds, it'll stay at this end, and now Padula unhappy that no foul was called on that last sequence. Sean Padula unexpectedly gets drilled by Jordan King as King just lowers the boom on Hunter Couture, and I believe Hunter does have a gripe, forgive me, Sean Padula does have a gripe on that one. King finds Quinn, and he missed everything. Great job by Padula coming over, taking away what should have been an easy basket for Quinn. There's a foul on Quinn. Love the uh, little head fake by Couture to get Quinn out of position, who picks up his second personal. Well, one thing for certain, Hunter Couture, extremely crafty as a player. You don't get to 1,500 points without having a high basketball IQ, especially playing for Mike Young. You see the setting up of the screen right there by Couture. His motion right there got MJ Collins open, just unable to handle the basketball. Now the foul goes against Hunter Couture. And a great job by <laughs> Robbie Barron. Well, and, and there's been a lot of conversation as you see Couture trying to get over the screen. And I personally don't agree with that foul simply because you can't impede a player's progress. Hunter Couture is trying to go toward the basketball for a DHO. I don't think that was the right call. But even still, I like what Robbie Barron did as Hunter Couture and Sean Padula both headed to the official to have a conversation. Robbie Barron goes over and gets his two guards away from a potential technical foul. Yeah, from behind, he grabbed two fistfuls of jersey and literally pulled them away from the official. And if I'm Mike Young right now, I may want to call a timeout and just have a conversation with both Hunter and Sean Padula, both these guys elite-level competitors. But at this point, there's been a lot of conversation with the officials. Collins with the steal. Going one on two, tough shot, and he earns a trip to the free throw line. So Collins will be shooting a pair of free throws. When we come back, 1631 left in regulation. Hokies up by two. I actually had a chance to call my the game Virginia Tech at Miami, and Alan Bristow attended the game. Of course, living in Florida now, had a chance to talk with the great, one of the great Hokie players of all time, but also. Charlotte Hornets coach back when the true the men of teal with my guy Larry Johnson grandmama Alonzo Mourning and of course the greatest Hokie of all time Wardell Curry well Risto still holds the single game record he scored 52 points against George Washington back in 1973 so are you are you saying that Bristow was the greatest Hokie of all time yes you're saying that I am saying that. over Wardell yes okay yep when Wardell left, he was the lead scorer all time. It's not here. just about points, Corey. Oh, well, you, you brought up points. You said lead this game, single game. Did Wardell ever score 50-plus in a game? George. Yes, he has. I'm not sure if it happened oh, here as a Hokie, but he absolutely scored 50 in a game. <laughs> Jordan King is on the board. The Spiders' leading score ties the ball game at 36 apiece. 
Well, we talked in the first half, Corey. How, if you are Richmond, do you get Jordan King going? Well, I believe, that, uh, fortunately for Richmond, they have a number of other weapons. So not just Bailey and Bigelow. Hunt, they've got a number of guys with Quinn, so they have picked up the slack because there's been so much attention paid to King, which is understandable when you're the co-player of the year in the conference. Well, you don't win 23 games in a season if it's a one-man show. And Isaiah Bigelow now has 13 points to lead the Spiders. But I love the way Chris Mooney is having his team pick up full court, slowing down the Hokies, not allowing them to just walk the ball across half court and execute what they want. They have disrupted the rhythm of the Hokies after their scores. Mooney is the 2024-810 Coach of the Year, the all-time winningest coach in Spiders history, past the great Dick Tarrant a few years ago. And again, this is 19th year in charge of the Spiders, one of the longest tenures. Actually, the only two guys in the history of the A-10 with longer tenures at one school. Can you name them? Ooh, one of them would be the great John Chaney yes. at Temple. Um, outside of that, let me see. I got to think on the other one. I know Coach Chaney. Yep. Tough shot by Hunter Couture. Gets up with a grimace. Hokies keep the basketball. Lynn Kidd gets himself in a tough spot. Missed the foot of Quinn, and that is the eighth Virginia Tech turnover, which has been more of an issue this year than in the previous four years under Mike Young. And you can see fatigue on Quinn and Lynn Kidd. Lynn Kidd, at, on that possession, was so tired. He simply tried to throw the ball off of Quinn's legs, but these two guys have been battling this entire game. Mike Young and Chris Mooney both recognizing that as both guys get a break as their substitutions come in. That was the second foul on Sean Padula. So Mike Young has his junior point guard take a seat. There is Coach Mooney, former Princeton Tiger. Still does a great Coach Carrill impersonation, although as we get further and further away from the great heyday of the Princeton Tigers legendary head coach, like his players now have no idea who Coach Carrill is which is sad. I, I, I'm sure they probably do, because when you consider, I believe Chris Mooney gives them a history lesson on Coach Carrill and his influence on the game. How many different organizations and programs run the Princeton offense? Or now? some variation of it. It's amazing how it still lives on. And we see it with the Richmond Spiders, and we have for the last two decades with Coach Mooney in charge. Once again, after a score, Jordan King picking up his first point of the game, and the Spiders now fourth point he had a triple oh that's right he did have one early in the first in the second half correct thank you for correcting me sir i hate to do that no no you really don't and sean padula knocks down his first three of the evening and you don't hate to correct me are you sure that's his first three yes i'm You're positive i'm, I'm positive okay. yes right. and, and i'm correct sure i'm correct this time I? you are well, well you know i meant to bring it up earlier every it's, once in a while a blind squirrel finds a nut right King with the air ball. And I'm glad you brought it up because you finally did help me out oh, in look. America what actually happened. So, of course, I took a red eye to get here last night. Mm -hmm. And you, of course, our producer, Evan, everyone knows that I'm tired. I didn't make it back in time to be able to come to shoot around. However, my guy, Dougie Fresh, who I request to please do these games with, mm -hmm. didn't even tell me the game was at 9 o'clock. Malajal Poteet fouled on the way up. So and as so I he will go to the line. As I get to my hotel, I take a nap. I set my alarm for four o'clock, preparing to come to a seven o'clock game, only to find out through email, which you know I don't check my email often. You text me when you need me for something. Through email, I have to call you to tell me that the game is actually at nine o'clock. Okay. You cost me at least two hours of sleep, just for the record. I just want you to know that. So you've heard CA's version of facts. Now I'll give you the real facts. So you see the obstacles that I have to deal with. <laughs> I'm an obstacle now. <laughs> so he does get here. He makes a great effort to get from the West Coast. We appreciate that. You're paid to do that. We appreciate that. Oh, you got to bring money into it. Okay. And so... While you were waiting for me to call or text you to look at a schedule that you have put on your phone just like I do that says 9 o'clock. It's also on ESPN.com. It's all over the place to see 9 o'clock. Listen, I am paid to lead 
not to read. That is your job. I, it is your job as the point guard of this outfit to make sure that I'm where I'm supposed to be on time. I am representing the two of us at both of our shoot-arounds for ESPN to make sure we've got the most up-to-date information that we possibly can. And I look after I'm done being the only announcer at those shoot-arounds, Couture misses the three, to see that you have sent by email, not by text. Mm -hmm. I'll be there at 5.30. Mm -hmm. And so then when I read that, I realize, oh, Corey thinks it's a 7 o'clock game. I immediately responded to that email and said it's not a 7 o'clock tip, it's a 9 o'clock tip. So if not for me, first of all, you're welcome. Second of all, you would have been here three and a half hours before tip, and you would have been sleeping here on the table. Not so again, you're welcome. Not had you text me like you were supposed to. I'm supposed, again, the yes. obstacles. Yes. A lot yes. of rules with Corey Alexander. <laughs> but uh, anyhow, we're glad to have you here, and uh, you got a chance to see the Knicks and the Warriors last night. You'll be at that Milwaukee-Boston game tomorrow night. Quinn misses on the turnaround, and then the foul on the rebound. And a great job defensively by the Hokies. As they've tightened the screws on the defensive end as of late, however, also have the Richmond Spiders coming in as one of the best defensive teams nationally. And that's really the way the Spiders have gotten to a 15-3 and record in A-10 play and co-champions of the regular season. John Padula gets right to the basket and lays it in. Love the decisive play by Padula getting downhill. More importantly, recognizing that he does have an opportunity to finish without the shot blocker being able to get over and affect his shot. Ball goes to the backcourt. It was deflected. And so no change of possession. Shot clock down to 10. Bailey, tough shot. And he gets the friendly roll. And as you've talked about, Corey, it's the other guys who are keeping Richmond right in this ball game. Well, if you watch Jordan King and the way he's being defended by Hunter Couture, you can see why he's not able to get going as Tyler Nickel finishes through the traffic off a beautiful find from Young. Nickel with the strong finish and an opportunity for the and one. His dad, Eric Baum, Jackie, look on from the stands. Of course, there goes dad, both he and mom. I texted him earlier, sent him a picture of themselves in the stands. He said, don't we, don't we look excited? Well, they're excited now as they see their son coming right into the living room, able to finish with the contact. Tyler normally does his damage from beyond the three-point arc, this time trying to get a three-point play the old-fashioned way. Well, Corey, as you know, the former North Carolina Tar Heels been on a great roll coming into this zone. Last three games. He has averaged over 15 points per game. This for somebody averaging nine per game for the season, including 18 the last time out against Florida State. And so notably, those were his first three points here tonight. And I told him I got to get him a shirt. So we, of course, the Valley Boys, he's one of the Valley Boys. I got to make sure to get him one of the shirts that my guys have put together for him to wear, of course. For our national audience, you need to say what a Valley Boy is. A Valley Boy is a young man. Mike, Mike we also, Walls. And Mike Walls with the finish as Tyler's unable to get over in time to stop that. But the Valley Boys are guys from the Shenandoah Valley. Tyler Nickel, of course, Harrisonburg, Virginia. Ralph Sampson, Harrisonburg, Virginia. The greatest Hokie of all time, Del Curry. Fort Defiance, <laughs> Grottoes, Virginia. Of course, Kenny Brooks, Waynesboro, Virginia. Kevin Madden, University of North Carolina, back uh -huh. in the day. Walker, uh -huh. Kenny Lambiot. The Valley boys, we got a lot of plays. And if you extend the Valley as far down as it goes into Roanoke, then you got to start thinking J.J. Reddick, George Lynch, Curtis Staples. It's a lot of Valley boys representing the great state of Virginia. Yeah, there's been some good ball coming out of the Commonwealth. No, 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 no. See, there you go. Commonwealth you, of Virginia. No, no, no. It's where you went wrong. We're not talking about the entire state. We're I was trying about to bring valley. in the whole state. No, we don't do that. We're talking about the Valley. Oh, my God. There's 757. Northern Virginia is a completely different spot. Trying We're talking to, about the ballot. Trying to, to give your home state a little bit of love and you shoot it down. No, the home state gets love, but we're talking about the ballot. When we're talking about Tyler Nickel. You were talking about the ballot. You asked what the valley was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Tyler Nickel was a pretty good scorer back in the day at East Rockingham High in Harrisonburg. Padula able to beat the shot clock and roll it over the rim. He's into double figures. Great footwork by Padula, recognizing 
The attempt at blocking his shot, the up and under step through to be able to get the bucket in the paint. Along the baseline, Bailey missed. Couple of point blank shots missed by Richmond King for three. His off night continues. And the lead continues to belong to Virginia Tech as we head to break. Hokies, 47. More and more frequently, we have teams that decide not to come. And while I don't really like that, I also would prefer for teams who don't want to be in not to be here. I think that's the key right there. If you don't want to be here, don't come. I think that's the message. So I'm sure that each and every one of these programs had a meeting with not only their athletic administration, but also with their team. And of course, with the coaches, the players, everyone involved. And if the collective decision is we don't want to be there, you're only doing yourself disjustice by showing up as well as the NIT. If you're not going to respect it, don't be a part of it. Disjustice? Is that not a word? I don't think so. It is now. In the Valley, it is. <laughs> <laughs> Injustice, forgive me. <laughs> Spiders with the ball down three. Virginia Tech trailed early. Big Richmond was up 22-13 in the blink of an eye. But the Hokies fought back, had the lead at halftime, and maintained that now with about nine and a half minutes to go in regulation. And for the record, I'm the math guy. You're the, you're the wordsmith here. You're the grammar guy. I'm a linguist. See, there you go, trying to bring the big SAT words into this. <laughs> third foul on Jordan King. He was part of a pair of MAC. That's the MAAC regular season championships as a freshman and a sophomore. Padula rattles home the first. Jordan King, for as good as he has been again this year, he did not have a Division I scholarship offer coming out of high school. He was a preferred walk-on at Siena who immediately showed, boy, I'm going to be part of a championship team, got a scholarship for his sophomore year, averaged 12 a game, and then decided, I need something new, and he has found his way to the University of Richmond. He considered after two years at East Tennessee going back to his hometown school, but ultimately decided to come and uh, play for Chris Mooney, and he sure is happy he did. We talked after shoot around this afternoon, and you can just tell what a great experience it has been for him at Richmond. And, and you will hear and talk about more of those stories in days to come, simply because the high school athlete is no longer as valuable as is the transfer. And so with the game and the way it is now with the transfer portal, you're going to hear more and more of those stories who young men and young women who have to bet on themselves early and then find their way into a Division I program, but oftentimes going to have to take the walk-on route or even go on Division II or Division III. And this young man, Sean Padula, has his own story. He signed with Mike Young without having ever met Mike Young because of the pandemic. At the time he was coming out of high school, he and his parents came here to Blacksburg on their own, drove around campus, poked their heads into this arena, but couldn't actually see anybody to talk to until after the Zoom meetings, and he signed on the dotted line. Well, I tell you what, I've gotten a chance to get to know Sean's parents. Dr. and Mrs. Fadula, and when I tell you, they are absolutely awesome. Great chance to talk with them during one of our big Monday games here this week. And I can absolutely see them putting Sean in the car, making the trip around to see where is a good fit for him, not only athletically but academically as well. And they've chosen the exact right place here with Mike Young. Yeah, that's Dominic and Bernadette, who actually, when they were driving around campus, they saw Mike Young walking. On a sidewalk, Jordan King on the nice Princeton-esque look from Neil Quinn. They saw the head coach who was recruiting their son, but they couldn't stop and say hello on their unofficial visit here to Virginia Tech. Why not? It was outside of a official recruiting period, oh, it was during perhaps. A dead period. Yeah. Okay, okay. But again, during the pandemic, you got here when you could. Yes. And so the aforementioned Sean Padula. Also one of the top assist guys in the ACC for a team that finished eighth in the league. And again, th this is a team, and when you look at Virginia Tech, you go back and you think about the fact that they beat Boise. Or is that the way, right way to say it? I remember you Boise. Right. Boise. 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 You know, once again, you're the words, words man. <laughs> Uh, they, I'm glad you remembered that. Yes. That was months ago. They beat Boise. They also beat Iowa State, who won the Big 12. So these are teams that they beat 
on a neutral floor this year. They battle with depth issues as well as health. Hunter Couture missed a couple games throughout the season. And that's those were big losses for him not being on the floor and playing, you know, where he wasn't 100% healthy for the majority of the season. But they had a number of big wins, beating Virginia here at home, beating NC State, the eventual ACC tournament champion, on the road. So it wasn't a bad. Desired outcomes work themselves out. Sometimes they are implemented the following year in the regular season, and sometimes they're shelled. Well, love the fact that, you know, college basketball has true competition to be able to experiment with these rules especially when you consider the fact that there are oftentimes rule changes that you're considering putting into the game throughout the season. Bailey, another strong finish yeah. on the move. Bailey. He's, he's got a, 11 points. But he's done a great job attacking the rim. Now you see Richmond moving back that full court pressure, more so morphing into their man-to-man -man as the Hokies have grown accustomed to beating that pressure and oftentimes being able to attack with an advantage. Padula goes to the floor. Barron off the bounce, no. Poteet off the bench with the offensive rebound. Collins left all alone. As they always say, the best time to shoot an open three is off the uh, offensive rebound. That's absolutely it. And Hunt recognized Sean Padula was the next pass. He did not go to MJ Collins, so great recognition by Collins to step up and shoot with confidence, knocking down another three. Bailey driving dish, this time giving it up, and Quinn able to finish. Quinn showing off that soft touch. Fortunately for him, he makes that shot, which he's adept at doing. However, he had an opportunity for a wide open dunk that he did not take on that possession. Well, how about the game he had, Corey, back in November at Boston College? 21 points as Poteet tries to shoot over him. So 21 points for Quinn, six rebounds, five assists, and a career-high four block shots facing Quentin Post of BC, the All-ACC performer. The only such stat line in the last seven years by a visiting player at a power conference opponent was Jalen Johnson of Duke at Pittsburgh in 2021. I remember the Jalen Johnson game, and I also remember Quinn's game going up against Post. And that was a great big man battle between the two. Well, you know, Quinn was second team all eight. Go to as high of a level coming out of high school, but they develop. And as you mentioned, you're going to be a better college basketball player at age 22 23 than you are at 18. you've been around for a long time the game is no longer new to you as bailey misses the first free throw but more importantly you've lived on your own for a while now you don't have to rely on mom and dad to wake you up in the morning and take you here take you there you're understanding you're much more self-sufficient and you have decided whether you love the game or you don't as i believe we're going to have bacon yeah, there's, there's no bacon up in the stands. Two missed free throws usually in this building at Castle Coliseum means the uh, the fans get bacon, but it's a uh, non-regular season game. It's an NIT game, so that promotion is not in effect. I'm sorry, Corey. I'm sorry. I, I, you lost me at no bacon. I'm sorry. <laughs> I mean, I, I, don't really, I don't really know what to say at this point. <laughs> However, the Castle Guard felt as though they were going to get bacon, so... Somebody, whoever's distributing bacon, they better find some gift cards or something. Well, they have been conditioned to expect their bacon. And they did a great job at forcing two missed free throws. Tech has been knocking down its threes after a really cold start. It missed their first eight. They are five for their last seven. Collins make it six out of their last eight. MJ Collins having himself an evening here in front of the home crowd. You can call it a neutral game if you want. I know exactly where we are, and I know who they're cheering for. Well, Louisville remembers that MJ Collins, when he is on, despite the 26% shooting, can make three-pointers. He uh, was a perfect three-for-three three back in December against the Cardinals when he scored a career-high 20 points. Collins up to 15 and has Tex lead to nine. Add to that, Hunter Couture gets into the act, and the Hokies starting to put some distance between themselves and the Spiders. This is when the Hokies are at their best, when they're having success from beyond the three-point line. MJ Collins. You tag, are they going to have their All-American player healthy and ready to go? Do you have anything we can tell this audience that will make them think, boy, we're going to have the three-time conference player of the year back? Yes, I can tell you TBD. TBD. To be determined. So that doesn't help. <laughs> no.
But Elizabeth Kitley, of course, went down with what looked like a significant knee injury. She didn't play in the ACC tournament, but there is still apparently a possibility that we may see her on Friday at 3.30 on ESPN2 when the uh, Hokies take on Marshall. But without her, Tech is a completely different team yeah. having lost three out of four. Well, you know, anyone would be a completely different team without the three-time yeah. ACC Player of the Year and All-American. So going to be interesting to see if Liz is available. But even if she's not, one thing's for certain, you still have Georgia Amor, who's an All-American in her own right, and, of course, first-team All-ACC performer. Collins, good close out that time. King trying to push the tempo. Delani Hunt has had a quiet night, the former Wagner star in his first year as a spider. Under four minutes to go in regulation. Quinn, pass a little bit out in front of Jordan King, out of bounds, it's another Richmond turnover. It's seven. Thank you, guys. Yeah, Carlson averaging 17 points, five rebounds a game. But the Anteaters have won 24 times this year. So what will happen? It's coming up at the top of the hour. We'll send it out to Dave Feldman and Corey Williams. The Anteaters win every time because they have an elite nickname. Yes, one of the best. No question about it. Well, you know what? We've got a solid matchup in that department here tonight. Another assist for Padula. Kid with another throwdown. You don't need to say anything other than Hokies and Spiders, and you know who you're talking about in college basketball. Well, especially in the state of Virginia, when you start talking about these two universities. And this is, oddly enough, the first regular season championship for the Spiders since 2001 when they came into the A-10. Of course, I grew up watching the Spiders under Dick Tarrant in the Colonial back in the day when my big cousin Kenny was playing for the Dukes of James Madison. Used to go see those matchups all the time. And again, this is a uh, long-standing rivalry that's been dormant. They used to be rivals, Virginia Tech and Richmond, in the Southern Conference, but they still have played each other in scrimmages each of the last five years. Ever since Mike Young got to Virginia Tech, he and Chris Mooney have brought their teams to each other's campuses for scrimmages before the start of each regular season. Because they are great tests for each other. You talk about disciplined offenses, but also very good defensive coaches. And so you know that you're going to be tested when you play against these two teams. And of course, each coach has a tremendous amount of respect for each other. Big bucket for Isaiah Bigelow. Back to a 10-point game. And once again, back to the pressure. It's really more of a token pressure. But as you see, Padula dribble right through it and tossed up to Lynn Kidd for the dunk. You can see now that Virginia Tech has gotten accustomed to this pressure. It's no longer phasing them. As you see, 9 of 10 from the floor. Could he possibly get to 70% by the end of the year? Ooh, from the logo, Delani Hunt cannot. Now the Hokies with the 12-point lead, some separation. Now we've already talked about the fact that the women's program here hosting the NCAA tournament. So if the Hokies move on, they can't host. And I believe they're matched up with Ohio State. Is that they correct? They are. The Buckeyes already won tonight. So uh, that is the matchup. And arenas may be tough to come by. That is often the, the case, or sometimes the case in the NIT, because you don't know the schedule from round one to round two, who's going to win, who's going to be the higher seed. And sometimes arenas aren't available. As we see Hunter Couture. Forgive me, Sean Padula attacking straight down through the pressure, tossing it up to Lynn Kidd. I thought we were showing Hunter Couture bully balling his way to the rim on that last possession. But I like the highlight from Padula to Kidd even better. Yeah, that's seven assists now for Padula. Seems like more than that, but he's got seven assists, including that highlight lob to Lynn Kidd. Mm -hmm. Sean Padula's done a great job distributing the basketball throughout this game. Finding his teammates, hasn't had the scoring game that he normally does, but has been very efficient with the basketball in his hands. Those two free throws by Hunter Couture extend the largest lead of the night to 14. Quinn 
Off the front rim, another rebound for Lynn Kidd and the Hokies. See the uh, end of the road and a spot in the second round on the horizon. A minute 20 to go, up by 14. Oh, the look away to the corner. That's a Hunter Couture, and again, he gets this conversation from me all the time. Ooh, little give and go, and Kidd was fouled. But Hunter Couture passed up what I thought he should have shot. Okay. Shot three in the corner. Sean Padula penetrates, four, right? easily yeah, tosses it over to Hunter. Three. Even though there's a defender there, his hands are down. Hunter needs to take that shot. I want him to be more aggressive. He got the 1,500 points today. In all honesty, I think in five years, he should have scored 2,000 points. I think he's passed up way too many opportunities throughout his career. Then it's Rice and LSU. All games are also available on the ESPN app, so you can watch anywhere. So Hunter Couture has not played his last college game, but he may very well have played his last game here at Castle Coliseum in front of my baby girl, who happens to be his fiance, Chloe Brooks, in the stands supporting her man. There's a, my Chloe bug right there. And of course, baby sis Gabby along for the ride as Sean Padula also checks out his last game here, most likely for the season. Then again, you I never guess know. a third round game could yep. possibly be here. Absolutely. You never say never, especially in the NIT. You just don't know. Yeah. Well, this Hokies team, especially if they're playing like this, the way they have in the second half of this game, they absolutely can advance in this tournament and have a chance to be able to play. I believe the Final Four is now in Indiana at Hinkle Fieldhouse. Yes. Is that correct? Yeah. Look at me knowing my NIT knowledge. You're all over it. Well, you are an NIT champion. This is very true. Got the ring to prove it. Knocked out of bounds. Into the game for the first time with that defense, Brandon Recksteiner. Also back into the game, Jaden Young. And for the first time, we see John Camden, the redshirt sophomore from Downington, PA, for Virginia Tech. Foul call as Bailey ran into both his teammate and the defender, Jaden Young, who picks up the personal. And so Jai Bailey at the line. He had a big moment this year at Duquesne back in mid-January against the eventual 2024 A-10 tournament champs. He had the game-winning layup late. Saw Keith Dambrot, the longtime head coach at Duquesne, announced earlier this week that uh, he will retire at season's end and he'll go out with an NCAA tournament bid as the representative out of the A-10. Congrats to Coach Dambrot, who, of course, coached King James in high school, St. Vincent, St. Mary's, along with Drew Joyce. So this is the way to go out for Coach Dambrot ending his career in the NCAA tournament no matter where that happens. Rex Steiner bottled up, knocked out of bounds. Richmond, the last to touch. Jaden Young, the freshman from Goldsboro, North Carolina, with his first two points. And that should do it. Well, after a really slow start to the night, Corey, the Hokies picked it up and put their foot on the gas pedal here in the second half and will walk off with an impressive 16-point win. Virginia Tech shoots 48.1% from the field after starting 1 of 14. So once they decided that they wanted to be here, Dougie Fresh, they got it going. But it took about...